Hello friends. I did get some interest in a Q and a, so I do have some questions that came through on the community post that I created. And I also have some questions that I received by email. So you may see me looking to the side because I simply just have those questions written down and I'm just going to go through just answering them willy nilly and from the heart. You may hear my kids in the background. We are currently homeschooling. They are working on some independent work. So as I always say, this is real life over here. So just to kind of forewarn you all, you may hear them, but that is okay. We are going to go ahead and get these questions answered. So the first question that I had was, um, it was a two part question. So the first part of it was, how do you stay on track when you are tempted? So first off, I have temptations all over the place because the rest of my family, even though they have started to eat more so carnivore and more so meat heavy, they still have ketogenic recipes that are still incorporated. And I am the sole cooker of the household. So you best believe I'm the one that is cooking those ketogenic meals, but still yet I had to get my mentality healed. I had to go into this carnivore way of eating, not looking at it from a diet perspective, but a perspective of my body healing. I had to get to the point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that is what keeps me going. So all in all, you have to get rid of the diet mentality. You have to truly heal your mentality and your mindset. And that is what will truly keep you on track when it comes to those temptations. You know, think of it this way. Those foods are not important right now. The ones that are hindering your better health goals, they are not worth it. You know, can you possibly incorporate them in the far future? Possibly. But for right now, you know, you know, we all know when we were eating the standard American diet, we knew those foods were not truly good for us. A lot of us, we knew we were being lied to when, you know, packages and boxes were being labeled that they are heart healthy, um, that they are low fat, low calorie, you know, all those little bit of marketing gimmicks deep down inside, we all knew, but you know, they were able to fool us all. So that is how we got into the mess that we were in to basically have our better health be completely upside down. So that is the best suggestion I can make when it comes to that question of, you know, how do you stay on track when you're tempted? And then when it comes to the temptations, is it a situation where there are other household members that are eating still yet the standard American diet? Could you possibly healthify their meals? Because even when it comes to keto and carnivore, you can switch up some meals and your family, they might not even realize that they are missing anything, especially when it comes to children. Children are so resilient. We are kind of hard on this situation because you know, sometimes we try to pity the situation and we try to say, oh, but you know, they are only a child once, you know, let them live their best life, let them live their best childhood. But you know what? Making those changes is allowing their future to be secured with a proper human diet. That is the best gift that any of us can give to the future generation and to our children. So try to get the entire family on board and you can very easily do that without them really having to know. Have their standard American diet choices 
be minimal. When you go on shopping trips, throw in just a little bit of possibly what they might have ate on the standard American diet. And that would also minimize the amount of temptations you are having within the household. So those are some suggestions when it comes to that first question. The next part of the question is, if you get off track, how do you get back on track? So this is a really good question. So this is in terms of if anyone gets off of track with their way of eating. Um, so if they come off of plan, um, a lot of people refer to this as a slip up. You know, I don't really like to look at it as a slip up because I consider anyone coming off of track that is a profound moment because it is a learning experience you know from that moment that you went off track you have the opportunity to discover and to learn if you take the time of why you came off of track it can be such a profound moment for your journey going forward so i like for everyone that comes off a plan Think of why you came off a plan. You have to truly analyze why did I eat whatever it was. Um, I'm not going to mention any food names um, that is standard American diet or that someone could have had an off plan meal with because we definitely don't want to trigger any um, foods. So it could have been anything. Think of why you did that. Is it something emotional you're going through? Um, is it allowing you to fill a void when it comes to emotional feelings? Is it filling a void when it comes to boredom? Why did you succumb to that food? Why was that food able to satisfy your emotion that you were going through? So it is going to take a lot of thinking. It's going to take some brainstorming, but you need to give it some thought because that thought process, it can either require self healing. You can self heal through it. If you get to the gist of why you came off a of plan, it's going to allow you going forward to be successful. It's going to allow you to be more consistent of keeping on track with whatever it is, your ketogenic way of eating, your carnivore way of eating, but you need to get to the root of the problem. We cannot fix a problem unless we know what the problem is. Definitely, and this is coming from someone that went through mental health therapy if it is something emotional that you're going through, definitely seek help. I will be the first person that will shout out to anyone. Definitely take a chance on getting mental health therapy. Even if you are someone that is skeptical about it, take a chance on it. If you have a visit with one mental health therapist and you do not click with that person, request another one until you find that one that you truly feel like they can help your goal of basically coming to a healing process or a healing journey with your mental health because a lot of this, when it comes to changing your way of eating, when it comes to trying to reach better health goals, your mental health component of it is so important because a lot of this is truly reliant on your mentality. And if it is simply just filling the void of boredom, I want you all to think because I know a lot of people basically they go off plan one meal and say if this one meal happened to be on a Saturday, then they figure, you know what? I came off a plan. I ate 
you know, whatever it was that was not ketogenic or carnivore. And they figure, oh, well, you know what? Today's Saturday, so be it. You know, the rest of the day, I'm going to eat these standard American diet foods. And tomorrow's Sunday, it's also a weekend. So guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to eat standard American diet. And then come Monday, I'll just start all over again. For me, I may get some kickback on this, but I don't agree with that mentality. I don't because that is allowing yourself to have a fad diet mentality and think of it from the perspective. If, for example, if you had gotten a flat tire and only one of your tires was flat, would you go instead of changing that one tire that's flat, would you go around your car and slash the other three tires? Just because that one was flat, I don't think so. So why continue to self-sabotage yourself? For me, I feel it's really important if you come off a of track, your very next meal, get back on track. You deserve it. You deserve to do that for yourself. Do not allow one off plan treat or meal do not allow it to sabotage and label the rest of your days as oh well you know i'm just gonna come off of plan and we'll just do this the next weekday or we're just gonna do this at the beginning of the following month start in the now my friends because if you don't you can definitely cause a horrible attitude and a horrible ripple effect of continuing on with the fat diet mentality. So that covers um, those two questions that that subscriber had. The next question I had was, what is my favorite cut of meat? And the secondary question to that was my favorite way to cook it. I love any cut of meat that is lamb. I absolutely love lamb. So when it comes to lamb, my favorite cut was actually getting a boneless leg of lamb, seizing it up, allowing it to basically rest in those seasonings in the refrigerator for 48 hours. And my favorite way was to rotisserie it on my grill. I have not had my grill for several months now. I am in the kind of shopping phase of looking for another grill because I definitely miss being able to grill and to be able to do that rotisserie method. But I literally slow rotisserie it on the grill. Um, we did have a rotisserie mechanism that was able to spin as the boneless leg of lamb was grilling. And it was amazing because once you go through and slice it, it is just like gyro. Um, some people pronounce it as gyro, but it is exactly like gyro or gyro meat. And once you thin slice cut it, you can saute it either in your cast iron, nonstick pan, um, if you have a flat top skillet and it crisp up. So amazing, just like a gyro meat. I absolutely love it. So I would definitely say lamb is my favorite. The favorite cut would definitely be boneless leg of lamb and most definitely that cooking method. I do definitely miss that rotisserie method. It was just so amazing and so delicious and definitely a huge bang for the buck in comparison to buying a gyro platter at the local Greek restaurants. Also because unfortunately our Middle Eastern as well as Greek restaurants, they do add filler to their gyro meat so I cannot partake in any of those local restaurants. So the next question I had was, where are you from? 
such as where you were born and what are you culturally? Okay, so starting off first, where am I from? I am from New Jersey. Um, so I know a lot of you uh, enjoy my accent for certain words that come through like water and sauce and hot dogs. Um, I still have very much the accent. So I was born and raised in New Jersey. We moved to Florida. I did move down with my parents. Um, so when I had moved down, it was at the age of 16 years old. And for any of you that want to do the math on it, um, so that was 23 years ago. So you can definitely figure my age that we moved here at six, uh, the age of 16 and been a long time that I have been um, currently residing in the state of Florida. Um, I still very much do have my accent uh, because still, yeah, you know, I was around a lot of my family members. Uh, my mother, she still resides in New Jersey now. Um, so we talk all the time. So her accent is also very strong. So I, I still have and, you know, still big part of New Jersey is still in my heart and still with me to this day. So as far as a question of culturally, my mother was uh, born and raised in the country of Turkey and my father is uh, from and was born and raised in India. So I'm a mix of Turkish and Indian. Um, so that should cover that question as far as where I'm from, where I was born and, you know, culturally, where do I come from? <laughs> so, um, the next question I had was a two part question as well. I was asked why carnivore and will you ever do keto again? So the reason why I chose carnivore was because I have always had the interest in carnivore. So actually, when we started the ketogenic way of eating, I did share on my interview with just Jason Keto. I shared on that that we had started the ketogenic way of eating January 5th of 2019 because our oldest child was getting seizures. So I found a video of Dr. Ken Berry's and that is how we started our ketogenic way of eating as a household. But for me personally, I had seen a lot of um, videos and influencers when it came to the carnivore way of eating. And I absolutely love meat. Um, so coming from those cultural backgrounds of being Turkish and Indian, we definitely had a lot of meat growing up, a lot of variety of meat, um, you know, such as lamb, goat, uh, we definitely had our fair share of unique cuts of meat and just the variety of meats that we had available. Um, so I really wanted to try carnivore at one point in time, but I held off because, you know, it's kind of, it was just really kind of just easy for the whole household to stick with the ketogenic way of eating. So it's kind of like my child's health needs was priority and I put myself on the back burner. As Dr. Ken Berry started more so uh, taking the proper human diet approach to suggesting carnivore uh, more so than I was seeing him promote the ketogenic way of eating. So, you know, all in all, it's all the proper human diet, um, but still yet, I started hearing more benefits of the carnivore way of eating. So I was more interested in starting the carnivore way of eating because as I've mentioned previously before on one of my videos, at the 15 month mark, when I had lost 101 pounds of doing the ketogenic way of eating, I did have a lot of emotional things going on in my life. I was in a very dark place. I went through anxiety, depression, so with that being said, it still allowed me to gain 42 pounds still eating the ketogenic way of eating. So I had to change things up. So it was the right time 
to try the carnivore way of eating. I gave the ketogenic way of eating for years. So it was enough time for me to kind of see whether or not it was going to work for my body for the ongoing future. So I can definitely tell you my body has been responding so positively to the carnivore way of eating. So that is why I continue to choose eating a carnivore way of eating for the past four months now. So that is pretty much how I transition to doing the carnivore way of eating. I have always known about it throughout my whole four years of doing a ketogenic way of eating. And because I did have some hindrances with the ketogenic way of eating as far as the 42 pound weight gain, I'm still feeling a lot of uh, depression and anxiety that the ketogenic way of eating was not helping um, those emotions that I was going through. I felt like it was kind of making the situation worse than it really was. Um, so I had to simply just make changes and kind of just do some experimentation just like I did with the ketogenic way of eating. Um, as far as the second part of the question, will I ever do keto again? At this point in time, it is still premature that I cannot fully say whether or not I would do full on keto again. I may more so experiment in the far future with doing keto vor because still yet I would be able to incorporate certain things um, because there's only certain things that I would love to include. Um, so as far as when it comes to the veggies, I was somebody that I absolutely love onions. I loved mushrooms. Um, I loved jalapeno poppers. So certain things I would love to incorporate. Definitely. I would have to take the same approach that I've been doing and do a reintroduction method to find out if any of those would hinder my better health goals, or if at that point in time I should reach maintenance, I definitely want to make sure that I am taking the proper approach. So when it comes to would I do keto again, I feel like I would more so do keto vor would be my answer to that question. So the other question that I have was why no cheese? Are you staying away from it forever? So uh, this subscriber had noticed that I have not posted any of my meals, including cheese. So the only thing that I've been incorporating is um, butter is what I've been incorporating. So I know a lot of people because that has the component of cream. Some consider that to be dairy. But as far as when it comes to cheese, I have not incorporated as of yet because with that hindrance that I was having on my ketogenic way of eating, it was possibly either vegetables that was causing me the hindrance and the irritations, or it was possibly cheese. So I have decided to continue on with dairy free. So I've been dairy free for the past four months now with that exception of butter. I do have plans of reincorporating cheese come June. So that is the game plan is to do my reintroduction in June. At that point in time, we will be having our homeschool summer break. So if I do get ill or if I do have any adverse side effects, at least it will not affect my children's homeschooling schedule. So I am going to do a true reintroduction approach. I am going to simply just have a portion of just one ounce of cheese and I need to be allowing my body at least a week to document and see if I have any adverse side effects. So that is part of the Berry Tribe reintroduction method that I will be following. They are the health professionals. They are the experts. So I am going to definitely follow that advice going forward when it comes to any reintroductions I do. I have been very careful when it comes to my reintroductions. Um, if any of you have noticed in any of my meal videos, even when it comes to seasonings, I try to use them 
as seldom as I can, aside from just using my Redmond salt. So, um, as far as staying away from it forever, so that should have covered, I'm going to reintroduce in June and I still have not decided on what cheese I will be reintroducing with. I have contemplated if I'm going to go in with possibly doing some A2 cheeses like goat or sheep. Um, so we will see. So I will definitely be sharing that with you all come that time of June when I do my reintroduction with cheese. So the last question that I have here is, do you drink coffee? Um, so I don't drink coffee. Um, I have not drank coffee for nine months now. I was actually drinking it um, consistently. I was actually having two cups. So I was having one in the morning and then I was having one about like afternoon-ish. So when I was working, I had a very crazy, very hectic job. Um, it was very high volume, very high productivity. Um, I have mentioned to you all that I have always worked in the field of healthcare. So it is very, very busy. There is always a lot of hecticness going on. It is a very um, dense <laughs> schedule is what I can tell you. So it is very, very heavy on the body and the mind. So I definitely incorporate a coffee to be kind of my reliant for my burst of energy that I was getting. Um, and it was definitely a false burst of energy because of course, when you're having that caffeine, it is giving you that thrill and it is giving you that energy and that drive until you hit that crash. <laughs> so that crash was never fun because when you go through that withdrawal process of being on such a great up the whole entire um, day of having that coffee. And then once you get that withdrawal, that that caffeine has basically made your, your energy just plummet. Oh, it, that's the worst feeling. <laughs> so that is when I drank it. When I was working, there was points in times that each week I was working 80 plus hour weeks. Um, so there was times like I was not getting off until 11, 1130 PM. Um, so it was very just hectic and very stressful on my body. So that coffee was simply my fuel source to kind of keep my body just going and moving. So because I had left that toxic job in the month of August, I actually have not needed to drink coffee. Um, you know, will I ever incorporate it again? Possibly, but if I do, I am figuring to experiment with decaf first um, and try it that way. Um, I am going to be getting employment very soon. So my body might give me the feeling just the mentality might make me feel like I am lacking something only because my body, when I did work, it was having two cups of coffee. Um, so I'll have to see when that time comes, how my body responds. But if I should need to, I may experiment with decaf coffee. So that is to be continued and to be determined at that given time. And I will definitely include you all on that decision-making that I possibly make. Um, so at this time, I may just stay away from it. I may experiment with tea possibly. So I have been doing a lot of brainstorming to kind of prepare myself and to kind of get a game plan in place. So that was all of the questions that you all had for me. So I hope those answers basically sufficed uh, basically what you were looking for to be answered from those questions. I appreciate so much each and every one of you that had participated. 
and providing me some questions for this q a i definitely appreciate that you all had interest in me doing a q a and if you do want to have me do more of these q a's definitely drop me a comment and let me know but as always my friends i appreciate you all thank you so much for participating and watching and i will catch you all on the next video take care friends